on to my next costume tutorial which will be Christine Daae's masquerade dress from the 2004 movie. I've shown you a few photos here I got off the, the internet. Now originally I bought this pattern which is Simplicity 4479 but after doing a mock up of the bodice which I'll show you over here it didn't really have the seam lines going in the right place and plus this was bits too long at the front it wasn't quite the right design for um, that particular bodice if you want to be as picky as me but as you can see it goes up here and around here follow me if you can follow my finger around to the side there which wouldn't be right for that particular top now if I was doing Christine Dyer's Think of Me dress the ivory dress uh, when she was on the stage now this would be perfect but um, so after re-looking at it and looking at the original designs on the pink dress, it isn't uh, isn't right. Okay, this is um, our third practice run. At which point now Mum is actually tearing her hair out. But there we go. I've managed to get the... Um, well, Mum managed to redraw it on me so the seam lines at the front are now going up in the vertically and the point's a bit better at the front. I'll just zoom this picture here as you can see. So very sharp free at the front and then goes up a steep curve and very high into the waist. Giving you a quick look around here. There we go. So it's only a practice run, so it's just giving you an idea of the shape we're trying to create. And what we noticed on the dress as well is around the sleeves is like a little cap sleeve, um, which we think might be extra support of the lace because there's some lace on the top and there's some tool lace that comes out from underneath the strap so we think that might be the reasoning behind that but we're, we're not sure but that's what we're going to do next we'll see you in a minute okay guys so behind the scenes secrets here <laughs> Okay, we're actually creating the little cap sleeve for the armhole on the bodice, as I, I try to explain it earlier. Okay, this is how she's going about Complete it. Complete stab in the dark. So we have our piece of paper to create our pattern. Okay, right now she's that's actually... the front of the um, bodice. Okay, now we're... Don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> Now I'm going to have a go at actually creating one. Okay. First of all, I'll get to try and get the shape of the armhole without moving the bodice too much. Okay. That's as near as I'm going to get it. Where's my little Okay, it's got to be wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So that's about a turnover. And another turnover. And make that one wider. So I think that is more or less a shape for the front. So, total guesswork on my part. That's probably what the front pattern will look like. We'll cut that out. Uh, have some rough material, put it together and see how it looks. But that's more or less what it's going to be like for the front part. 
font. Okay, this is our uh, rough cutout for our little cap sleeves that uh, Mum was attempting. Now this will go around the front as marked and this will go around the back. Then you've got your top which is wider at the top and then this is going underneath your arm. So I'll make that like that. So that'll end up underneath and then that'll be joined to that like so eventually. And then you have like this little half circle. And this is, as again this is just a practice, it's only pinned at the moment. Just to give you an idea what would be going on underneath the bodice if you were to take the lace off it. And here we have that little cap sleeve, which again at the moment is only a practice run. As with all things, we have to sometimes do it again and again before we get, get it right. Incredibly time consuming, hard work. But if you go that extra mile, it will make it look just that little bit better. So there we go. Okay, just a quick show of my pattern pieces. I am using a very nice uh, blush pink polyester taffeta that I uh, found on eBay. So that'll be your front, next piece of side, side back, and then the back. I've got that the wrong way around, sorry. But I think, yeah. So that's where the back opening is going to be. So all together I'll have eight pieces. No, sorry, seven. Forget that, seven pieces. <laughs> okay, I've now cut out my uh, pink taffeta pan pieces and at the moment I've just pinned them together because uh, I'm actually waiting for my hoop and as it's going over hoop and I'm having like a little bustle bag on the back as well we want to make sure that um, it's going to fit properly before we actually sew it together so I've just left that for now and I'm moving on to my lining okay now again I'm using a a very lightweight, silky lining. It's very, very thin. It's got a very nice feel to it. Um, and you're going to cut out the same pieces again as you did for your top, for your outer layer. So you do exactly the same again. And then I'm going to stiffen my bodice. So I've cut out all over again, cut out exactly the same pieces that you need. Um, so they say this is your stiffener and I've just put little labels on them. I do this all the time because otherwise I get totally confused with so many layers and which piece is which so I just label them side front, back and side back etc. You don't have to do this but it just helps me because <laughs> otherwise I get really confused. But there we go. So we'll be applying the the stiffener to each part of your lining. So I just pin that down at the moment in place onto the back of the lining. I've done that with most of my pieces so far except these last three just so I could show you guys. And then I go around and tack the, because this is so on, uh, interfacing. Just tack it down in place and that's what I'm going to crack on with and get the last few pieces done and there's not a lot more I can do until my hoop comes through the post. So I'll see you guys later. Okay we've sewn up all the lining pieces for the corsets and we've attached the 
interlining to the back. This is so in interlining, so it's all been sewn down the seams. So lay that out. And we've also sewn up the main bodice using the fabric for the outside of the dress. All the seams have been sewn up. What we're going to do now is turn right side to right side, like that. And the bits we will be sewing will be the neck, round the sleeve, and all the way across the bottom. And the bits that we're going to leave open and unsewn are the side pieces and the shoulder pieces. Everything else is sewn together. Right, we've now sewn the bodice. We've so got that interfacing on the inside. And we've turned the whole thing the right way out. Once we've um, cut into the corners, cut off any excess from the seam line so you don't have too much when you turn it the right way out. Remember to cut uh, where your peaks are. And remember to cut down where your V is and round the corners on the inside there before you turn the whole thing inside out. It's now been pressed and you'll notice that we didn't sew up the side and we didn't sew up the edges at the top of the shoulders. Those will be sewn together uh, when the whole bodice is put together later on. Okay, on to the next part. As we went over earlier, there's this little tiny cap sleeve attached onto the strap. And these were the pieces that we were cut out early on in the video. And uh, we're seeing it outside and aligning for each one, so you've done two pairs. So it'll be the outside and underneath is your lining. And what you've got to do on each one, on both pairs, outside and lining, is pin them together like so. You've got your chunkier end, which is slightly wider, which will go in under your arm later, and the thinner end, which goes on top of your arm. And I've just pinned them together there, and I'm just going to... So about a centimetre in across the top so those are sewn together and I will do that for the other pieces as well. So again your lining and then down to your other sleeve, your outer side and your lining. Pin it in place to hold it and then I'll just machine it across the top so then they'll be sewn. Okay the next thing you're going to do is take your piece of lining now they've been sewn across the top there. Make sure your flaps on the inside are opened up. You can give these an iron if you want to just to iron them flat but this piece is actually going to go face down so your seam flaps are facing that way and your good side your sewn seam there is facing up. Then take your outside piece of taffeta, place that on, making sure you've got the right pieces together because there was that other piece that's a bit wider and the thinner piece should match that one there. And make sure your flaps on this piece are sticking up. Then what you're going to do is starting with your seams and make sure your flaps are open, it's very fiddly. As I say, a good iron can help them flatten them down to start with if you wish. Or you can just, if you're feeling confident enough, you could just pin them down and just sew. It's completely up to you. It's a... Uh, so I've just got to sandwich those together in the middle first, opening up my flaps on the bottom and the top. So bear with me. 
Okay, now you've joined your lining and your outer layer together from the, the middle seam that I first described earlier. And put some pins on the inside of the sleeve, not the outside. And then you're going to sew all the way from that end, right round there, following my finger, right to the other side. Back in a moment. Make sure you tell people to do that. Right, we've now sewn from there round to the other side. There we go. All the way up there. We should do the same for the other one as well. Okay, and before we be turning it the right way out, you're going to get some scissors and cut into your corners again very carefully, but don't cut through the sewing line, like so. Okay, you do that every few centimetres along to help your sleeve bend. 